Hello, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter doing our part to prevent net-borne transmission of the coronavirus. Here today to do a review of the HNK Heckler & Koch VP9. Now this is to be a... Sorry, I'm just going to transmit the virus right over the internet. This is a follow-up review on the H&K VP9, and the reason I wanted to do it was a couple reasons. One is that uh, H&K has started shipping the uh, 2020 versions of the VP9 with 17-round mags. Now, what's really cool about that is that that uh, brings this pistol up in on the uh, on my spreadsheet for uh, rounds per size and weight or kinetic energy per size and weight. It brings it up to near the top of the list. On the uh, kinetic energy per size and weight, uh, it brings it right up to about a third of uh, when you compare it to other stock 9mm pistols. Uh, it makes it second uh, or third only to the um, uh, Springfield Hell Hellcat and the Rex Delta. Uh, with the non-stock, uh, for example, if you compare it to a Glock 43X with the Shield Arms 15 round magazines, that leaps to the top of the list. So that would push this down to fourth if you look at it from that perspective. Now, the if you look at it rather from kinetic energy, but just more basic rounds per size and weight, then this is about fifth, and that's where we're adding in the, um, the Mossberg MC2 and the uh, Sky CPX2. So still it's at the top of a very lengthy list on the spreadsheet so well worth considering and it has some other advantages as well. Now there is no uh, immediate plans at least from H&K to offer an upgrade for those of you that already have one of these with the 15 round mags. Um, now there are uh, third-party manufacturers of 17 round mags that you can get for your, your current VP9 and you can also buy the H&K uh, 17 round mags as well. Now I'm, I'm going to just stick with the 15 round mags. For me it's just fine. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that with a 17 round mag this really moves up the list uh, for size and weight. Rounds per size and weight and kinetic energy per size and weight. Now, I probably need to do a new video, a follow-up video on my spreadsheet because it's gotten way more complex. Now, it's still, I still do have that one score that's the weighted rounds per size and weight and where I'm giving more value to the first four rounds because uh, that in a, in a, that a pistol will have, they give full value weight, but then each additional round is a little bit less valuable. So, for example, uh, the tenth round is is uh, maybe not quite as valuable. As, of course, the first four rounds, you get to the 15, 16, 17, 18 rounds, even a little bit less value. Uh, of course, if you had a, a 500 round magazine, maybe each additional round has uh, not less, not only less value, but maybe even is is harmful. You start having too much weight. So uh, that's why I have the weighting, you know, where I weight a, a value the first four rounds more than uh, each, uh, each additional round. Now the uh, other thing I did add recently to that spreadsheet was the kinetic energy per size and weight. And that uh, basically using a calculation basing on the barrel length. So a longer barrel is going to generate a little bit more velocity and hence a little bit more kinetic energy. So then I'm making a calculation based on how much kinetic energy you have packed into say a 15 round magazine. And so a 15 round magazine with a uh, barrel length of uh, three and a half inches or 3.6 inches is going to be a little bit more than say 15 rounds and like a Glock 43 which has a three point I think a 3.1 inch barrel. Now uh, as I've discussed in the previous review of this pistol um, the, it does have ambidextrous slide releases which I really like uh, almost as good as the Walter PPQ and then it has the uh, paddle magazine release which I really really like I like to operate it in a a pinch motion like that and uh, that kind of helps maintain a firm grip on the pistol while you are ejecting a magazine now as far as 
uh, slide releases. Uh, the uh, slide release works really good, uh, left and right side. And so um, that's uh, really awesome. Now there is, as I noted in uh, the previous review video, there's a little bit of play in the, uh, this, the right hand side slide release. Now I did order a, a, a complete uh, replacement sl uh, slide releases, both left and right side. They fit together just like that. A little tooth thing there that slips right in there. And then there's a slot here that has a, a plastic retention clip that holds that in. Now the reason I actually ordered this was I was looking, I think it was in Brownells, and um, I was looking in the catalog and I was looking at the shelf here. The thumb shelf was something that I've been a little bit disappointed. I mean, it's a minor issue, but it's a little bit shorter on the right-hand side than it is on the left-hand side. And I saw in Brownells, it looked to me like this piece had a longer uh, thumb shelf on it. So, hey, I'll order that and make my pistol perfect ambi kind of thing. Well, it turns out the, the parts are, are still the same as the stock. Now, this one does fit a little bit, uh, a little bit tighter, seems to be a little bit less slack. So, maybe someday I'll put this in. But anyway, it's fine right now. Now, f for me, um, uh, while I, you know, claim to be the ambidextral gunfighter, actually, I do have an issue with my thumbs, uh, an old motocross injury where I basically tore out a ligament here. So this thumb, that's as far as it can go. So I don't have perfect ambidextral mirroring on my my hands. So uh, for those who do have perfect ambidextral mirroring, maybe they'll notice that difference in the thumb shelf from one side to the other. I don't think so. I think it works just fine. But uh, people whose bodies are more com intact may, be, uh, may, may find the PPQ, which has perfectly mirrored slide releases, a little bit better. One thing that I mentioned in the previous video, and I'll show here a little more detail, is the, uh, um, the reset. So when you pull the trigger, and then uh, the slide cycles and then you go to work the reset um, it's, it's a little bit of a spring to it it shoves your finger out and so we'll show here well I'll sh show a reset and we'll sh it'll shove the finger out and we'll mark it right it there on the the trigger guard and now let's do it again we'll cycle it fire it again and cycle and then do a reset but I'll hold I uh, use my other finger to help slow and restrain so it doesn't my finger doesn't get shoved out and we'll see how far what the difference is and you can see it's about uh, you know maybe a quarter to three eighths inch difference in uh, the fact that I can uh, the reset is getting my finger is getting shoved out a bit further than I would really like and the PPQ does really well on that now I do think the trigger on on the VP9 for me compared to my PPQ is a little little bit better than my PPQ, but the reset on the PPQ is better than my VP, VP9. Now, something I'll be doing this summer is doing some more bloody hands testing. Uh, we're gonna be testing, uh, again, going into a little more detail than my kind of just fun bloody hands video I did recently, but we're gonna do the testing again on the VP9, PPQ, uh, FNS9C, and the PF9 from Caltech, and then also going to do include the SIG P365 and uh, a Glock 43, maybe 43X with the shield arms, we'll see. And then also, uh, hopefully, maybe a Hellcat. Now, one thing I found in my previous testing, and it's more anecdotal at this point, but I found that uh, grip texture with the bloody hands didn't seem to make a big difference. Um, I, uh, maybe some more detailed, more fine testing will, will ferret out something different or ferret out a different result. But for the most part, I could, from my uh, subjective feelings, I, I didn't feel like I had any problem restraining any of the pistols uh, with the slippery hands. Now, where I did discover a pretty significant difference was when trying to, say, slingshot a, the slide or to pull the slide back to chamber around with bloody hands, slick bloody hands. And uh, this is where the HK VP9 in my initial testing came way out on top. Now, part of it is because it does have excellent slide serrations on the slide, but the big benefit is the, the what the H&K calls the supports, these ears on the back of the slide that allow you to get a, you know, a good grip on it and 
work the slide back even with very slick bloody greasy oily whatever hands so we'll be doing some more testing on that with the next bloody hands manual of arms video now the other thing I found and, and this is kind of as I'm I'm generally a point shooter and that's one-handed point shooting but I do uh, like to train for about 10 for 10 or 20 percent of the time with the two-handed thumbs forward hole and uh, generally I've often done the whole uh, index figure and in, finger in front of the front of the trigger guard now this uh, the VP9 has some uh, like a uh, texture there on the front of the trigger guard and it's a little bit of a curvature there trying to help help keep that finger in place now my experience is I'm just it's if if you're shooting a lot of rounds like uh, 10 or 15 rounds right and bang 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 it uh, eventually it shifts enough that my finger comes off of that and I'm um, reestablishing the grip with my support hand and that's one of the things I don't like about the two-handed thumbs forward grip is um, I, and maybe you know better training and to get better at it would be just fine but it's and I see it with a lot of other reviewers too you see them often shooting a lot and then having to re reacquire that support hand grip or reshift it and that's something I don't like I never have to do that when I'm shooting one hand it's always there's no reacquiring of your grip so that's one thing I like about one-handed shooting but of course yes for longer distances and for really rapid fire uh, target reacquisition with uh, two hands does definitely work better but but uh, as I've talked about in other videos I like one hand because it leaves my other hand free for uh, fighting manipulating other things and then also as I've talked about in other videos I favor once you become ambidextrous and I suggest learning it first on a carbine or a rifle but once you become ambidextrous with your pistol I think it's better to use initial presentation with your left hand and several reasons one uh, two big key ones I think is if you're a motorcycle rider that leaves your right hand free to you know right hand free to operate the motorcycle the throttle and front brake and you can shoot your firearm left-handed of course on a motorcycle you cannot run a motorcycle with your left hand and in leaving your free right hand free to operate a pistol so if you want to shoot and ride a motorcycle you have to shoot left-handed then also for those of you in law enforcement I think uh, primary presentation of the firearm with the left hand uh, helps you out in, in uh, traffic stops a hostile traffic stop where you're coming up on a vehicle that you've pulled over and that gives you better angle on the driver in the vehicle as you approach minor issues but I think uh, uh, once you become ambidextrous for the optimal use of cover uh, then take advantage of primary presentation being left-handed for those reasons uh, one other thing is uh, you can see that this has the uh, a striker indicator there and uh, you see that little red dot right in there and if you once you pull the trigger you see it basically it falls in there and out of sight basically so that's just one little thing it does have a um, let's get a we've got our dummy rounds here I'll load a chamber dummy around and uh, it does have a, a loaded chamber indicator right there on the side and you can see that little sliver of red right there off of the extractor um, I can't by hand do a tactile and feel it and it's not it's not it's so thin of an indicator that I would never trust that and so I would always do a press check to to check check my chamber condition of the weapon and as I've noted in other videos the way I do a chamber check depends on what hand I'm using if I'm holding the pistol in my right hand I do basically kind of the overhand slingshot type approach where I just pull it back a little bit and that's so that I can see down into the chamber and if I'm uh, left-handed then to allow my eyes to have that direct through the ejection port view of the chamber I'll do the use the forward slide serrations to do a chamber check so in some uh, paddle magazine release I think is the uh, is by far 
the best way to get rid of your magazines dump magazines out the reasons are one it's fully ambidextrous but to me the bigger reason uh, beyond that is that it moves where on a typical pistol you have the, ma the magazine release on the side here where if you uh, if you say if you're pocket carrying or even uh, inside the waistband or on the hip uh, outside the waistband if that's exposed and it hits something you're going to on a button magazine end up with a you know that where your magazine is just disengaged it's not fully engaged it may still be sitting in there in the in the mag well but it's not fully engaged so you're going to basically get one shot and then either a malfunction or there won't be a round in the chamber and so uh, what i like about the paddle magazine release is that impacts from either side are not going to disengage and disengage your magazine and if you've got a decent holster it's going to cover the trigger guard and by covering the trigger guard is protecting the magazine release from accidental activation anyway and so uh, if you do insist on a button magazine try to get a holster that at least covers that to prevent the accidental disengagement of your magazine i run into that a lot with particularly when i'm using pocket carry for like an lcp or a pf9 and uh, with the magazine button there it's you now bump into stuff maybe i'm just particularly awkward or whatever but bumping into things it uh, disengages the magazine often when i come home at night and take my pistol out i find that the magazine has been uh, disengaged so i don't like that um, this is still for me not my primary carry uh, as much as I like it um, it's just a little bit too big and a little bit a little bit too heavy uh, but still it's very efficient as far as the round counts and kinetic energy per size and weight so um, you have to reconsider that or at least maybe look at a uh, the H, H and K VP9 SK the one with the shorter grip slightly smaller capacity Anyway, I hope you'll uh, uh, check out my previous video, my review of the H&K VP9. I go into more detail and have some uh, range time with it. And uh, then look forward to the summer when I'll have the, uh, the new Bloody Hands manual of arms testing of the VP9 as well as a host of other pistols. It's Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextro Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe.